Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to our video. Today, I'm be showing you five redstone creations I think you need to know about for Minecraft. And the reason I'm making today's video is because most redstone guides on the internet focus on making these three to four hour long pieces of redstone that are really cool when they're completed, but take way too long to make in survival, but they're just not really feasible. So what I want to show you today is five redstone creations that take less than an hour to complete that will hopefully inspire you and think, yeah, I'm going to go out and make that in survival. So that is the goal of today's video. That's why I'm showing you five redstone creations I think you will need to know about in today's video and hopefully you do all enjoy it. If you do, please do like and let me know because it helps out the channel and let's know you do like the video and want to see more like it on the channel. But anyway, let's get straight into it already, shall we? And let's start with the first one, which is one you might recognize in front of me, but you know, to me, it's always been one that's been a little bit elusive. I went through how to explain to me, but it's the one and only. And basically the idea behind this is it's an item sorter. So for instance, um, you know, this one's set up in a way that, you know, after I've just gone mining, it can sort everything out. So here's my chest full of things I got from when I'm mining. So I've got some cobblestone, of course, I've got some sand, some coal, some gold, some just all this stuff I picked up while I was mining. So we throw it in this chest right here, and what it actually does is it sorts it into the relevant chest. So if we want to, you know, grab any of it from its own chest, we can do that. So obviously we have to give it some time. You can see as it goes along. So I'm just going to actually uh, open up there. You'll see that as it's been going along, it's been slowly being absorbed. And what's going to happen is as it goes along, obviously it's going to go into the relevant chest. So over here, for instance, you're going to see this is going to start filling up with cobblestone. After the cobblestone is finished, then it's going to start filling up with the sand, which is coming next, and then the coal, and then everything else, and so on and so forth. So how exactly does this machine work? Because I don't want to just show you the redstone and be like, yep, that's a thing. I want to actually show you a little bit of how it works so it can maybe inspire you or make you think about some of redstone build. But basically the idea behind this one is there are three rows of hoppers. It can be intimidating to think about them as three rows. So just think about the top row first. The top row takes everything from that chest, which is absorbed into there, just all the way to the right over to that chest, unless it's taken by another hopper. The other hoppers can only take an item of their own specific thing. So this uh, chest can only take cobblestone because it's the only thing in there. This chest can only take uh, dirt because it's the only thing in there, which by the way, right now it's actually doing as it turns out. This chest can only take sand, uh, uh, sorry, this hopper can only take sand, and so on and so forth. And these hoppers will never, uh, you know, these hoppers don't actually go directly into there. This hopper will absorb from there, though, once this torch goes out, because there's a torch down there, as you might notice. And this torch will only go out once a second clever bit of redstone, which is this thing here, happens. Because these are all hooked up to comparators, which means that when 23 items get in here, which is this number of items plus one, it activates the second hopper for a second to absorb an item, put it in there, and yeah, that's how that works. It might seem kind of complex, and let's be honest, it is, but that's how that works right there. So basically, you can make this thing as big or as small as you want and the really cool thing about it to me at the very least is the fact that you could have literally every item in a chest in the game or you can leave uh, whatever items you don't like over at the end here so if we just want the cooked mutton for later we can take that out and we can eat that and also uh, if you want to you could have a, say a gravel one here and then you've got all the gravel in here and boom you can do stuff like burn all the gravel in fire because that's where it deserves to go or apparently miss if you're me so uh, yeah that's uh, something you can do with the uh, item sorter you can use it to sort your chest after you go um, you know for a for instance uh, after you've gone mining so you can get your stuff in different chests you can use it to sort drops from you can use it to sort literally everything in the game. You could put your entire chest system through this thing because you can use multiple chests this way by having more hoppers that way. And yeah, basically you can sort your entire chest system automatically in Minecraft. And although, you know, it starts at being like a 10, 15 minute build and survival like this one here, you can take it up to being as big as you want. And that's what I love in Redstone. Something that's scalable, something that can, you can look at and want to have a cool project from. And that's why this is pretty awesome. So yeah, that is the, um, you know, this is the item sorter. I think it's pretty cool. And that is uh, Redstone number one that I think you'll need to know about. If you didn't know about it already, then maybe you're inspired and you want to build it, but you probably didn't know about it. So the second one is one that I only learned about recently. I didn't even know it was a thing before now, um, because I, I guess I'd always known the Minecraft Hopper was kind of useful, but I never really appreciated just why. So basically, uh, here's the most basic application of it on a 4x4 room, because it basically works like a Roomba. Or, you know, the, the automatic Hoovers in real life, I'm, I'm sure that's a thing, or the automatic vacuum cleans, I should say. Basically, uh, anything that goes on the floor is just instantly vacuumed up by the thing, and if we actually get into the thing, you'll be actually be able to see they're in there. So yeah. It's basically like a mini kind of vacuum cleaner. If you have one of these going around your entire house, then it will clean up anything on the thing. But that seems kind of useless by itself. The thing where this gets really cool is the fact that it doesn't just have to hoover up the blocks that it's on, so it's just there. It can also hoover up the blocks above it if it's a half sub or less. So we throw some, uh, you know, some rails over there, for instance. You'll see that eventually, boom, they're just absorbed from this surface up here, which is really cool because it means you can have this, you know, automatic hoover thing going below your house and doing that. But it's not just useful for if you drop something in your house, because I'm sure you're not looking at that and be like, oh, yeah, I do drop things all. Oh, I accidentally stopped this by accident. <laughs> uh, I'm sure none of you are looking at this and being like, oh yeah, I'm dropping things all the time in my house. And yeah, uh, that, that's just not a realistic thing that people say. But you know, the realistic thing is like, okay, so you've got a mob farm, they all fall onto this, then they leave their drops here. Then the automatic, uh, you know, pop, uh, thing uh, or hopper in a cart comes around and it picks it all up. So that's why this is really handy. I think I need to give it a little bit of a nudge because I stopped it there. But you get the point. It can go around infinitely if you just have a few powered rails. You can make it go around at just the right time. And then once it picks up everything, so it, uh, instead of having 
having 200 uh, hoppers from here, I've used this as my gold farm by the way, instead of having 200 hoppers here, I can just have the single uh, hopper in a minecart, and then what it does is as it goes over here, it picks some stuff up and it puts it in here. So there are the rails for instance. And yeah, that's uh, a handy little thing that you might not know relating to, uh, you know, the, the minecart and the hopper. It's actually really useful, not only as an automatic hoover, but also as, uh, you know, as a farm hoover if you will. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it's really useful if you have any farm right now that just drops stuff on the floor and is useless, or if you have like, let's say a sugarcane farm where stuff just falls on the ground, having a minecart for hopper just going around and absorbing it all can be a handy little thing that you might not have figured before. You might have just thought this is kind of useless. No, it's really, really cool because of this half slab thing. So let's move on from number two to number three. And number three is actually to do, uh, it's basically, it's a really, 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 really simple bit of redstone, but it's something everyone's always asking for. And it's, uh, you know, like I, I always ask, I get people asking me for this advice. So I'm going to show you anyway, because again, for some of you, this will constantly you, but for some of you, it's kind of useful. So uh, basically, the double door system that everyone uses is they have two iron doors or two doors of some sort. Then they have uh, you know uh, the fresh place in front of them. But if you want them to be double doors that always open at the same time, you have to go through the middle, and you can't guarantee other people do that, right? So if you want them to be double doors, you have to do it like that. However, um, this system right here is basically the double door system, and if you stand on one, it'll work. Make both happen. So how do you make that happen? So the way this works is you just have redstone, which goes from both of them to go to both doors. It, it seems relatively simple when I just say it like that, but it's something thing that I know a lot of people have struggled with. So yeah, that's that right there. If you want to have both activate at the same time, you have redstone hitting both from both pressure plates. So from this one, activates both. From this one, activates both. From the center, activates both still. And yeah, that's handy like that. So obviously we didn't actually get through that time. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. So this next one, uh, you know, as you can see, it's a nice little guardian sponge room in there. Don't question why, it's just where we're going to be going next. Basically, uh, this is the troll door because when you see two pressure plates in front of a door, it is the, you know, it, it just, everyone expects the door to two doors to open. It, it creates this really weird frustration in your mind, which will, you know, be like, what? Why are the doors in the... And, and you know, that, that's why it happens when you uh, step on the press plates and they don't open. So exactly what's gone wrong here and why are the doors not opening, even though there are press plates in front of them? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? So let's get a golden cat out first. Uh, basically, the reason this happens, you might be curious, is because of the fact that we have these doors permanently turned on and the doors are actually sideways by default, permanently turned open to be, uh, you know, locked like this. So this means we can't turn the bedstone current on anymore. The only thing we can do is if we knew about it, we could go behind and we could turn off the little door like this and we could probably let one of the guardian free. So there you can see, that's the default position of the door. When you turn it on forever, that's, you know, it, it locks it, it kind of opens it forever, but people think it's locked. And that means you control people forever and you get this really weird sense of frustration when you can't go in there. So yeah, we can't go in there for now. We'll just let the guardian be free and we'll move on to redstone number four you might need. So yeah, uh, the kind of uh, gist of the goal here is that you can, you can make it so both doors open at the same time. You can make it so no doors open at the same time, or you can make it so one door opens at the same time. And I think uh, for a lot of people, you know, if you just have your house with double doors, a lot of people run into this issue, so maybe that helps you. Also, while we're here, uh, just in case you did know all of that, maybe you didn't know that you could place signs on iron doors and it makes it look like they're barricaded up. I think it's pretty cool personally. So let's move on to number four, which is just over here. And it's an automatic cooking machine. So uh, as you can see right here, we've got free chest, fuel, raw and finish. So if we throw over some 32 coal in here and then we throw uh, 64 mutton here, you'll see what it actually does um, is it cooks the food automatically does it, and then puts it in this chest. So um, this is something I actually saw in the comments as a response to um, you know, in, in, in my Let's Play world, I have just, you know, some hoppers set up with some furnaces. It kind of does the job of an automatic cooker, but this is the automatic cooker taken to the next level. So why is this so much cooler than just having, you know, two things going to a furnace? Because basically this just means you don't have to worry about the whole furnace system. You just have your stuff automatically come in here. So you see in a second, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll see um, as we uh, just leave this open. What actually slowly start to happen is we'll see our stuff pop into here. And yeah, it's, okay, there's our cook mutton, boom. And so on and so forth. It's going to start slowly cooking the stuff. And it means you'd never have to worry about the cooking system. You don't have to deal with any of it. You just put fuel in there, you put the food in there, and then you get the stuff. So how does this work? How is the magic system just turning two chests into another chest? So you probably familiar with the basics of this system, this part right here, where it's hopper into furnace on the top, hopper into furnace on the left, because if you take it onto the left, it's fuel. If you take it onto the top, it's the uh, ingredients. But then what we have is we have another hopper going into a dropper. The dropper then only activates if, um, you know, once the signal goes through here, and it means that the food goes through into the dropper and then spurts up to there into the chest where our mutton comes out, and it's very, very handy. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is the most efficient guy. This is just the one I found uh, after very, very brief googling. But if you do uh, something like this, you can make it. So, for instance, you know, you, you just have free chests. No one has to deal with any of the furnaces. You just put fuel and raw food in. You get finished food out. So, I think that's pretty handy. And, again, with every, every one of these, you can use it to get with the other stuff. But I, I, I just think that's pretty cool, personally. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Which is actually going to be a password-protected door. So, this is uh, necessarily the door itself isn't what you need to know about. But what is really cool is the password-protected anything in Redstone. Because, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, redstone, 
if, even though you can make a really secret, you know, lever that no one knows about, if someone does find the lever, they can activate your stuff. But what if they need to find a specific item that has a password on it? So let's say my password is white soy cat, and it has to be on a lever. This kind of functions as a key. That's right. So if, uh, if we go over here, you can see the button to open the door just won't work unless you put the key in this little slot here. And most people don't even know the keys in the slot. Most people won't even know that this is a door. I mean, the lava makes it kind of obvious. But what we actually have to do is we have to throw the passworded key into that, and then after that's activated, then our button will work. So there we can see our, our door's going to stop filling with lava, and it's pretty cool like that. So this isn't only just cool because you can use it for a door that's like protected by a key, and apparently the lava's not going to go away because it wants to prove me wrong. Um, this isn't only useful for. Okay, then it's actually going away. It's not only useful for a door protected by a key, which I think is a cool application for it, but you can also use this for any other piece of redstone, because uh, just to show you the uh, workings behind it, because you might be like, so how does any of that work? Basically, it's a, it's a really simple system. We have a hopper hooked up over here, it's filled up with uh, items with my password. The only way people can find out my password is if they go behind break and find out what's in here. As you can see, it's just got white soy cat, and once you put the last white soy cat in there, the, the I guess the fifth one, so if you have four in there, it doesn't work. If you put five in there, it does work. This activates the comparator to go to a certain signal, which means it reaches the and gate and once this reaches the and gate the other piece of redstone which you can see right here which is activated by the button will actually work so you can make it so a key needs to be in a system somewhere for any of your redstone to work and it's a really good way to frustrate people because people expect a button to work regardless they don't expect a key system to be involved and that's kind of useful so yeah in this uh, particular example i believe it's uh you know we go like something like 10 bits of redstone just do some experimentation try to make it so that your piece of um you know your last key is the one that you activates it so you can see right now this redstone trail isn't going to reach up there it just doesn't go in there which means no matter how many times you activate this, the AND gate, which is this thing right here, will not allow the uh, the dispensers or yeah, it's dispensers uh, to actually activate, and that's kind of handy. But bear in mind, this isn't just useful for a door, although that's mostly what I've used it for in this world. You can use this for so many other things. You can make it so any part of redstone in your house just won't activate without that. Or what you can do is you can make it activate something entirely differently if you want to do some clever redstone. Either way, hopefully that's something that can inspire you. Hoppers can only take in items. Uh, you know, pop, like you can see here, uh, this is a way more complex password. Hoppers will only take in items which have, you know, which match the items already in there. And because named items are actually, you know, the whole own thing, you can have a entirely secret password which a hopper has to be you know filled with which people don't know about because if it's on a half stamp like this they just can't access the hopper and if it has to have the thing in there before it will actually work and i think that's a really cool handy way to password protect your stuff in minecraft obviously people can just break their way through it but they can break their way through any redstone if this is like a non-breaking redstone scenario then having a password protected door is perhaps the safest thing you can do in minecraft so anyway yeah that is the fifth redstone build i think you'll need password protected anything in redstone or just in general password protected hoppers that's uh, that's uh, that's the fifth one today's video. I hope you did all enjoy. It. Hopefully, you learned something somewhere. Whether it's how to make an automatic cooker that actually spews the ingredients back up to another chest, rather than having to you know put it out from the furnace by yourself, which is what I know some people have to do. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, one of these does inspire you in some way, and hopefully they inspire you together. Because the cool thing about this that you might have noticed is, with the exception perhaps, I mean you could argue the doors can and can't, but with the exception of that, like all of these things can work together because so many of them are hopper based, whether it's minecart hopper or not hopper. Uh, what you could do, for instance, is you could have uh, a mob farm. So I'm going to fly over. To them. You can have this mob farm, which drops stuff into there. The minecart hopper takes it round into a chest, or apparently it's not right now because I stopped it. It takes it into this chest, which then sorts it into a you know an automatic hopper sorter. So this then sorts it into lots of different things, whether it's a, a rotten flesh drop or a rare drop or a cold drop. It takes the cold drops and uh, it takes the you know the other uh, drops which can be cooked. So let's say a chicken gets in there, and then it puts those in an automatic cooker. Except it will only allow you to access the results of the automatic cooker, i.e. the chest won't become visible until you put a key into a specific hopper. So that's just one example of how you could do this all put together. Hopefully you are inspired in some way. If you are, please do let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, please do like the video if you did like it, share if you really liked it, and subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos like this, well, not necessarily just on Redstone, but just videos I think you'll enjoy if you like your Minecraft every single day on my channel, and if you subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.